You're no longer trying. You're no longer trying to figure it out. Oh, what is the casualties of trying to figure it out? Oh, if we can just get a, get a road map, right? The well, the Lord wants to give us a road map. I am a prophetic artist, and on today, I'm not going to paint, but the Lord gave me something on last night that really just shifted everything that I had planned to do. He said, Crystal, I want you to give an illustration. And so I pulled this painting off of my wall for this very illustration because it matched everything that I was going to bring before you today that the Lord has designed. I'm going to open up a little differently. I am going to do my scriptural text, you know, and all that sermon stuff. But can we relax today? Yes, ma'am. Go on, tell someone relax. Relax. I want you all to ponder upon this painting on today. And I'm going to read the narrative. We observe the beautiful butterfly who is perfect in nature, but cannot avoid its purpose unlike the humans that enjoy its beauty. This beautiful wonder goes through the changes of life only to give the purpose of its creation. Now the butterfly fights the natural environment to push through its process of becoming or finding the expected end. All the while, through the process, the butterfly is never able to fully see the length, the width, the depth of its wings. Neither is it able to discern the colors or understand its value. The butterfly lives for purpose only, but its purpose serves people, catch this, and its prey. Mm. Just think as this wise insect knows how to rest in camouflage after uh, understanding that its journey to survive, it must seek rest upon a flower from time to time mm. if it wants to live in longevity. But even in death, the butterfly would have served its purpose for living. Mm. Now, why would you think God would tell Crystal to bring a butterfly here? And I get here and butterflies is on the wall. Oh, my God. That's right. Oh, oh God. I just love the Lord. <laughs> he heard my cry because I was once this butterfly. All right, so we're going to break this down. All right, that's the narrative that I had written when I originally painted this butterfly. That was my thoughts in reference to um, the butterfly. But I want to come right out, uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11. If you have it, you can go to it. If not, just listen real closely. And I want you really to follow me. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares yes. the Lord. Yes. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29 and 11 has always been a remarkable scripture of encouraging people when you're living in a time of hopelessness and a time of uncertainty and a time where you could become more fearful. But today, my title of my speak is The Process of Serving Your Purpose. Mm. I'm going to say it again. Mm. The process wow. of serving your purpose. We're still talking about personal development. Mm -hmm. The process of serving your purpose. First John 3, 1 through 2. I'm going to read it to you. You can note it or go to it. It says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, after that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are now children of God, and what we will be has not yet been revealed. We know that when Christ appears, we will be like him. That's right. For we shall see him 
as he is. My God. I want to focus right there where it says, Beloved, we are now children of God. God wants us to be able to see who we are. It says, and we have not, it, it, it has not appeared yet what we shall be. But we know that when it appears, which speaks of a timing of awareness. See, there's a timing for each and every last one of us when we finally walk into our identity. Mm -hmm. Just like that butterfly. There's a timing of process from the cocoon to him actually spreading, breaking the cocoon and spreading his wings and knowing I'm a butterfly. <laughs> you know, because when he's in that little sack, he don't know who he is. He doesn't know his width. He doesn't know his length. He doesn't know his dimensions. He don't know what color he's going to be. He, know he, he, oh, he just wow. know that there is something growing inside my of God, me. And there's God. something that's about to bust out. My God. Tell somebody I'm about to bust out. I'm about to bust out. Hey, oh my God. come on. There is something inside oh of me God. about to bust out. Out. I don't know what it is. I know that God has something for me. I know that Jeremiah 29 and 11 said his thoughts for me are good. It is not for evil. And it's for expecting it, a hope and a future. But now I'm in this second. I want to know what is becoming of me. Some are here today not knowing what is becoming of them. Some are here today you know, but you need to know the next step. See, we are all in different parts of our process, but you need to know that God wants you to be able to see, he wants you to be able to discern, and he wants you to be able to understand your process. Because when you see, and when you understand, and when you are able to discern properly your process, you won't be delayed. You won't miss it. You know, the process has to take place. There has to be a, a chronological period of time of processing. You can't go be before it. You can't, you know, go behind it. You have to go with that process. Even in discerning, you're still in the process. Yeah, that's right. All right? So stick with me here. It says, now we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. Now think the scriptures just take and say that. We are gonna be like him. We ain't gonna be like him until we see him as he is. So what has to happen? Not only when we find our identity of who we are, we find the identity of who the Father is. My God, when we find out who the Father is, we know who the daughter is. Who's your daddy? Come on, you don't need to go on a talk show. You don't need to be confused. You don't need to be uncertain because you know who you belong to. We're talking about identity. We're talking about your process. Okay, we're going to get this. We're going to be able to see, and now we're going to be able to discern because, you know, now that I look at myself, you know, I'm looking at the fruits of the spirit. My daddy got this, and I got this. Okay, my daddy got this. I got this. So you begin to understand that we shall be like him when we see who he is that is in identity and that is in relationship. And this is all going to just re-ramp your whole personal development. It's because we have not known our whole life who we are is why we have mismanaged our purpose. Yes. Our God. Yes. See, when you don't know the purpose of a thing, you will misuse it. You will misappropriate it. When you don't know the components of what it needs for maintenance and how that it was built with self-mechanisms that would heal itself, my God, you will go and you will go and try to fix on it and you will go and start pulling out things and moving things apart and you'll be putting things out of order thinking that you're putting them in order and then you end up out of order. Broke down. Depressed, oppressed, yeah. ran over, full of stress. Mm -hmm. This is what happened to us, but God wants us to bring us back into an identity where we understand and what, what we're seeing. I'm right in this thing. Now I know, just like anybody else, when you're inside of that cocoon, 
You can't see nothing. You know? And when you're inside in that cocoon, everything is the same color. Is nobody there in there with you? Come on. Some of you feel like that now when you're in the wilderness. You, you're just in a time period where God is growing something behind the scenes and it's not yet to be revealed who you are. My God. But you shall be like him when you know who he is. Yes. How do we know who he is? We begin to discern. What is the characteristics of God? What is my characteristics? What are the things that I'm desiring, the things, my hope and my faith and all of that thing that has brought that passion out of us that is in the likeness of Christ? We get that from the Father. All our talents, all our skills, right? All our ability. Even if we might not know what to do with them right now, you know you got them. And guess what? They're unique and they're different. And sometimes you might feel like, oh, I better not just say nothing about this. <laughs> because ain't nobody never did this before. When I look around, my wings, that's why I painted this butterfly, is not realistic. It's very abstract. You will never find a butterfly look like that. And it's purposeful why that butterfly looks like that. Because that butterfly is unique. Every person on the earth is unique. You have your own DNA. You have your own um, fingerprint. Everything is unique. There is only one of you. That's right. And God made you unique. And even though we're all unique, we all have a process. We all have a process that God is helping us to see, to discern, and to understand. Now, the process of serving your purpose your purpose is going to be to love and to serve one another. Just like this butterfly. Even in death, he still serves his purpose. He serves his purpose towards people. And catch this. He even serves his purpose to his prey. His enemies. Do you know, even if he die out there on the flower, predator, someone that eats him, it helps the cycle of life continue to go around. He still serves his purpose. And that is the same thing with us. We serve our purpose. We walk through this life that even if we die while we live, we have still served our purpose. We have still served our purpose. Our crowns are still laid up because we are not of this world. We are in this world for an assignment, for a point in time, for we were predestinated before the foundation of the world to walk out this purpose. Eternity is forever. Salvation is forever. But this suit that we are in yes. is not forever. Yeah. My God, but we serve a purpose. And God wants us to see it, to discern it, and to understand it. Because when we begin to understand it, just like the butterfly, we know how to rest upon the flower. My God, look at that butterfly. He's resting upon the flower. Someone's coming and observing that. He's learned how to rest. See, there is a part of our process where you're going to have to learn how to rest. Rest is just not inside of the coon while you are developing. Rest is also your defense. There is a refilling station for you that the Lord has prepared. He said there is a rest for the saints. There is a rest, but you have to enter into the rest. You have to know how to enter into the rest. Just like the butterfly, he knows. He goes find the flower that looks like himself. My God. He don't go and just rest on any sunflower. He searches out the land, and he looks for a flower that has his same colors so that his prey cannot see him while he's resting. How much more could we be wise? Well, we need to rest 
around the sisters and brothers that can cover us when we're in our weakest yeah. hours. Yes. Glory yes. to God. When we need to be in that environment of empowerment, mm -hmm. we need to be in a sanctuary. We need to be amongst those who have already walked through our process yes. that can cover us, that can protect us so that we won't get eaten. Come on. Because there is always a prey. The Bible says the devil seeks to devour. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He says he's walking to and fro. Looking to steal, kill, and destroy. If we want to have life and have longevity, we have to learn how to rest upon the flower. There will be times and there will be seasons where God is calling us into the rest. But because we're so beautiful, you know, <laughs> sometimes we're so beautiful once you got those wings out. Say, so, oh, no, I ain't going to rest. <laughs> I look too good to rest. Mm -hmm. Have you seen my wings, Crystal? Mm -hmm. Have you seen all the time I spent in that cocoon? Did you see how many times the wind and the storm came and kept on blowing my cocoon to different spots? Mm -hmm. And I had to stay in there a little bit longer and just wait for the breaking and the shifting to come hey, where I could God. be released. Come on. And now that I'm released, I don't know how to rest, Crystal. <laughs> Sometimes we could feel like that we have been in a cocoon so long. Yeah. I don't want to rest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's my time. Yes, yes. It is your time. It is your time. It is a pointed time, and there is a pointed time to rest. It's a time to do and to be, and then it's a time to lay down. Come on. It's a time to rest in the Lord. Yeah. You are children of God. You can discern your purpose. You can understand your process. Today, we are focusing on all those abilities, the ability to be able to see. Uh -huh. My God, I, I just praise God for this narrative here. It says, the butterfly is often portrayed as an essence of nature, representing freedom, beauty, or peace. My God. Their fascination of lifestyles used in many countries to teach children about nature, world, and transforming from an egg to caterpillar to a crystallis is one of the wonders of nature. You know, nature really can't explain how that happens because God makes things happen in time. See, people are not going to understand what God is doing in your life. They're not going to understand what, they, what God was doing in that cocoon and how you were in that cocoon and how you came out and you didn't look like everybody else. My God. Your wings came out a little different. We don't yeah. know. I think yeah, you yeah, was yeah. adopted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You know, you got some different concepts and some different ways about you. And you remind us of uh, old grandma or you remind us of old uh, three generations ago. Mm -hmm. And you, they must they come up with all these old adages. Yeah, yeah. But they don't know what God has done come on, yeah. come inside on. of you and what God is cultivating inside of you so when we observe this butterfly it speaks to us in the process of us needing to know we need to know and have the ability to discern we talked about before the having ability to discern starts with knowing who is your daddy it starts with knowing your foundation. Once you know your foundation, your identity builds from there. This is all personal development. Mm -hmm. See, some of us have been cultivated and we have grown without the understanding. So I have to bring you back in the simplicity yeah. and use yeah. a metaphor yeah. such as a butterfly yeah, so yeah. that you can understand. Yeah, yeah. 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 Where you are, we are all in different places, and we all have a process, and there's always seasons, summer, winter, spring, and fall. Yeah, God yeah. causes the butterflies to come forth in them all. Yeah, Do you right. understand that there's some butterflies? He said, huh, butterfly doing it out here in the winter. That don't make no sense. And see, because you can never understand what God is doing in nature. 
Because it's Pacific. It's pollination. He knows what needs to come around. He knows what needs to be cycled for another season. Yeah, yeah. And even though that butterfly may have came during winter time and his life may have been shortly lived, it still served a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. So what we have to yeah. understand, why do good people die young? Why did the Lord take yeah. them? Why is this happening to Come good on. people? Come on. Even in death, people have served their purpose. Yeah. And we have Mark, misunderstood Mark. life and Come death on. when it comes to humans and when it comes to living. We got to understand that our thoughts are not God's thoughts. Come and and our ways are not his ways. His right. ways is higher. Yeah. Yeah. But he does not leave us misunderstood. That's right. He says, if any man lack wisdom, Come on. Let, him ask, let him ask. And he's going to give you freely of yeah. it. Yeah, he's yeah. not hiding the process of your purpose on today. Come on. He wants you to be able to see it. He wants you to be able to discern it. And he wants you to be able to understand yeah. Yeah. it. Yeah. This removes all fear. Perfect love casts out all all fear, perfect love comes from God. It comes from your identity of your father. And when you know that your father loves you, you won't fall for the okie doke. You ain't coming off of that flower from resting to go play with the bumblebee. Come on. Oh my God. That is considered <laughs> foolishness. Oh my God. That's good. It only sound good in songs, birds, butterflies, and bumblebees coming out and playing together. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. You better rest. Upon the flower. Yeah. You got to learn how to dwell. And you got to learn how to go in the secret place. You got to learn how to embrace the presence of the Lord. Yeah. It's not a lonely yeah. hour. You got to learn how to walk with yeah. God. You got to learn how to talk with him. You got to learn how to hear him when no one's around and when people are around. Okay? You got to learn how to know who he is. Yes. Yes. And yes. know that his love yes. is there no yes. matter what yes. happens on the outside. That his love is there yes. and that your purpose never changed. And your process, you can't manipulate your way out of process. Yes. My God. You can't fast and pray your way out of process. Oh my God. You know, saints are all, oh, 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 God got me on this one. So, Chris, yeah, 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 I like that. That's real cute. Oh my God. I like how you go on those little cute little fasts. I like, I like that. That's real cute. Uh -huh. But didn't I tell you that there was going to be a process? Uh -huh. My God. That you might as well go on and eat something. Yeah. My God. Because <laughs> I told you it was going to be a process. Now, if you keep praying and you're fasting and you're trying to force me to move my hand and to manipulate me now, oh you're going to get yourself in trouble. My God. Yeah. Jesus. And if I was troubled at that, yeah. I said, who, me? Yeah. Mm, not me. I was troubled at that, so I got up and made me a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. And I was like, well, I repent, Lord. Yes. And I thank you for this sandwich that I'm about to receive. I ask that you bless and sanctify for the nourishment of my body. Thank you for endurance. To, 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 to endure hardship like a good soldier, Father. I just thank you right now. In Jesus' name. My God. Amen. Hallelujah. And then I sat there and I see how loving God is. My God, it doesn't matter how anointed you are. Doesn't matter how gifted you are. Doesn't matter where you are. You have a process. Yes, Lord. There is a process in every season of your life. Yes. The butterfly process is not over after it's out the its cocoon. That's right. That's good. It still has to learn the cycles of the year. It still has to learn how to hide and rest on the flower. Yeah. It still has to learn how to get out of the praise way. Oh my God. To not be eaten. Yeah. It has to learn environment. It has to learn when the wind is up strong. I better go all the other way. Yeah. Woo. It's wisdom in this butterfly. God has shown us wisdom. That we got to have wisdom. We can no longer be a people praying when wisdom is there. And God is trying to instruct us. Uh -huh. He's giving us directions in our, in our ear and saying, hey, go this way. Yeah, yeah. Go that way. Yeah. And, oh, it's something about our wings. Yeah. Mm. It's something about how beautiful we are. 
that we think that we can still fly out and dispatch out and still do what we want to do. And then when we get caught in a jam and we're in a spider web and the spider done wrap one of our wings in a web and then we want to pray our way out. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke this. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke this warfare and this season and every turpentine spirit and every spider-like spirit. I bind you now in the name of Jesus. Get up off of me. Get your webs up off of me in the mighty name of Jesus. And then we grow big in the spirit, right? Yeah. And your daddy, he loved you so much. He said, look at my daughter. Yeah. Yeah. He said, look at her. Oh, my goodness. She's walking in her authority now yeah. for no reason. Because <laughs> had she listened to me, right. she wouldn't have flew in that spider web. It was already set for her, but I was trying to show her to be able to see on her own, to be able to feel the wind, to be able to feel my presence, to feel the unctioning in the stomach when it comes or whatever the Lord does. In every single one of you, there are markers and That's spiritual right. markers right. that the Lord has given you on, to man. guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you, and it guides you into all truth. And you're going to know it is guiding you, whether it is you get an itch on your ear, or you get a, something crawling, or you feel a wind on your back. People get all kinds of little signs. That's right. Some people have dreams, some people have visions. Other people have more tangible things like bubble guts and they feel like they ate something wrong, but that's the Holy Spirit saying, don't do it. Yeah. Don't go there. All these things God is constantly trying to teach us how to fly. He's constantly trying to teach us how to discern and how to understand that there's a prey that's seeking to devour. That's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. And he don't let down for nothing. That's right. he, he, he's not resting upon the flower. Okay. He comes for a specific design reason to kill you. Yeah. To abort your future. Yeah. To provoke you to abort it. Mm -hmm. And God needs us to be wise. He said, I need you to be wise. He said, sometimes the children of the world are wiser than the children of light. Oh and I first saw that scripture, I didn't even want to remember where it come from. You could it. <laughs> I was disappointed. Like, oh, Father, what do you mean by that? He said, because the practical things, we have been believers that have aborted so many practical things that we have placed ourselves in a spiritual positioning of trying to manipulate God through prayer. And he's saying, go back to the practical. Go back to the foundation. Go back to the process. If you bake the cake and the cake came out wrong, throw it away, start a new cake. Go back to the process. Get your eggs, get your flour, get your oil, your butter, what have you. Get it. You have to go back to the process because you can't go away from the blueprint and expect the right results. My God. Definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing, expecting something, something different. different. <laughs> You're not going to get it. So God is saying, if you just go back to go back to the process. I'm giving it to you because he gave it to me and I was just like, who are you talking to? Oh, you talking to me? Oh, whew. it's hard when it hits you. Every word should hit you. And it hits you first. And if a prophet give you any word and it hasn't hit them first, don't even receive it. Yeah. It hasn't been qualified. He hasn't been first partaker. My God. Yes. You have to be first partaker of this to hand this out. That's How right. dare I feed you anything out of heaven? Come on, come on. Right. That's good. What kind of chef is that? Right. I don't I don't particularly right. eat from people who don't look like they eat. Right. Yeah, that's right. You don't look like you eat this food you just cooked for me. I don't think I want none. I gotta see your belly stick out a little bit like mine. I gotta see something. You cook at home cooked food, soul food. I don't see no soul in your appearance. You gotta tell me, show me your ingredients. How you doing this? Who's cooking for you? 
I mean, these are the practical things that God is showing us and teaching us how to live and how we, 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 we won't be deceived if we live in this such a way that God will be able to reveal to us our purpose and what we're supposed to be doing and how we can scale when God's talking to us. He said, my sheep hear my voice and the voice of a stranger, it will not follow. You know the Lord's voice. You know the Lord's talking to you. Say, hey, don't do it. Don't, please don't do it. Mm -hmm. Time out of the time. How many times have we overridden mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit telling us something? Mm -hmm. Too many times. Yeah. And I and finding ourselves saying, oh, God, I knew it. Yeah. But for some reason, guess what? My wings was pretty. <laughs> I just had to spread my wings. My God. It's shameful. It is shameful, but we have to learn that, and that's all a part of maturing, and I play with that, but it's very serious, and I don't take it lightly, but sometimes we just get caught up in ourselves and our own desires. We get caught up in those things because we don't have the clarity, because we have not seen, discern, and understand, so we think what we look like is who we are. My God. Mm -hmm. But what we look like is not who we are. Our ingredients is what serves our purpose. On, this God. is just my presentation. My God. Tell your neighbor, welcome. welcome. This is just my presentation. This is just my presentation. That's it. Oh, nah, that's deep right there. This is just my presentation. What is before you today is just my presentation. You haven't seen how I serve my purpose yet. And that's why you can't judge a person by what you see because you don't know what is inside of them. You don't know their purpose. You can't look at him on the keyboard and say, oh, he's just doing this for a jacket. He's going to want his jacket. He's going to do it for a jacket and he out. You can't say that. But inside him, there is a ball of fire of purpose. There is something that is emerging in that cocoon and just wiggling from side to side. There's something inside of him saying, I know it's some more in me and it's about to break out. I know what it's going to look like when it break out because when it break out, I don't even know if they're going to see me the same way. I don't even know if I'm going to sit at this keyboard the same way after I break out. Yeah. And this is what God is doing in each and every last one of us. On, and when you hear his voice, it's that's when the agitation begins. That's when inside of that cocoon begins on, to baby. wiggle and move. And you see, your cocoon now may be stagnant. And some people's cocoon now may be lame because you haven't heard the power of God come in and begin to bring life and bring suki hey. and shake up what's on the inside of you because there is greatness and purpose on the inside of you and you will mismanage your outer representative yes. and your outer presentation oh if you don't know your purpose of what's in the inside of you yeah. wow. God's coming to allow you to see to discern and to understand your purpose people write books of finding purpose and the purpose this and purpose that but purpose starts with identity you can't find purpose in a book because your identity is not in the book your identity is in God the Father only book you could find your identity in is this the Bible it's not going to be in an author books you got to find it for yourself and you have to listen. You have to see. And you have to discern because God is always talking to each and every last one of you. It is nothing special about a prophet. God is speaking to you. He's speaking to all of us. I'm not superior. He's constantly going through every avenue to try to speak to you. Can you hear him? Can you hear him over the voice of yourself? Can you hear him over the voice of the enemy? That is the question because he's always speaking. And he will not stop speaking. He worked relentlessly for his sons and daughters. Yes, yes. It is his desire that all be saved and none be lost. My God. He'll put something on a canvas just to reach you. Yes. He'll write you a letter. 
Yeah. He'll put something on a billboard. Yeah. He'll have somebody that ain't even saved yeah. drop something so yeah. wisdom on you that you just like, he don't even know me. Yeah, that's right. He's drunk. Yeah. He doing talking to me. He don't even know me. God will use anybody. Because yes. yes. he's constantly trying to reach us. Yes. He can't reach us if we're not listening, if we can't see and discern and understand that you have not been delayed, you have not been disappointed for reasons. That is God agitating you. Yes. Oh, yes. my God. Because in that process of your delay and your disappointment, oh, now I got your ear, huh? <laughs> oh, you're praying now, ain't you praying? Oh, yeah, we're praying because we need God. Yeah. We need him to do something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I need you, God. Yeah. What is it? Not my mama, not my father. <laughs> oh, it's me, oh, Lord. No. Daddy in the need of prayer. Daddy in the need of prayer. Help me, Lord. Just help me. Yes, yes. Somehow I done got all wrapped around, messed up, man. My wings ain't, they ain't doing nothing, man. They ain't doing nothing, man. Just help me. And then we start negotiating with God. Well, God, and you do this just this one time. This one time. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, just give me, give you give me this one more chance. Yeah. This one time. And what did he say? He said, sure, yeah. certainly. And over and over again, yes. God will give it to you. Yeah. How many times? Oh, well, 70 times 70. It's unlimited. Yeah. God is so merciful yes, over is. the years. I've seen the mercy of the Lord, and I just have to stand back and I just some, sometimes the Father's mercy for people will agitate you. Yes, it will. You say, my God, the mercy of the Lord is still on him. Yes, oh, God. We want to pray, get him, Lord. Get him, Lord. Get him. Get him, Lord. Get him. And you know, honestly, we all been there. Yeah. Oh, Lord. But the refreshing thought is, get him, God. <laughs> he said, get him, God. Yeah. How much longer, God? How much yeah. longer, God? Right? right? But the sobering thought is, God is so merciful. Yes. And his mercy endures forever. Mm -hmm. And when we are standing in the position for God to get somebody, we are not standing in the position of forgiveness. That's true. Yes. That's true. You cannot stand in forgiveness and stand in the same space of God. Get them, God. <laughs> just, just wipe them out. Yeah. <laughs> but Jonah told him that I ain't going to Nineveh. Why won't you just wipe, wipe that whole city out? They ain't worth nothing. They ain't going to be nothing. Their daddies want nothing. Their mommies want nothing. Wipe them out. <laughs> And the Lord told him, what he told John? He said, go. I want you to go, and I'm sending you with my word. And he said, oh, but my wings are beautiful. I think I'll go in the other way. I'll go in the other direction. Look at my wings. He said, he ain't going. And he found himself swallowed up, didn't he? Until he had to repent, and he had to go back to the process. Do the Lord have to swallow you up on the day to put you back in your process? Or are you swallowed up right now, sitting in the belly of some whale, sitting in the belly of oppression, sitting in the belly of defeat, sitting in the belly of anything that could, any substance or anything that is holding you and binding you? Because you should have went the other way. I believe on today that God is going to spit you out. He's going to spit you out, and he's going to put you back in your process. And inside of that process, it's going to be more beauty than before. The more pain, the more beauty. You believe that? The more pain, the more beauty. Because I believe strongly, and I don't know this, I'm not a plantologist or an animalologist. I don't even know those real words, but I'll just take them for 200. <laughs> but I believe that in 
inside of that cocoon, what determines the colors is the environment around the cocoon. The struggle, the winds and the temperature, I believe that all of that constructs what it looks like on the inside. See, just like us, what we look like on the outside has to do with everything that is around us. What perception has done to us, our identity, what social media has done to us magazines and perceptions of how we're supposed to look, how yeah. we're supposed to dress, how we're supposed to be as people, That's right. as blacks, as African Americans, yeah. or Americans that's African. Yeah, that's right. That got us all mixed up. <laughs> so it all has to do with your environment. What is shaping your environment? We're still talking about personal development. Yeah, check me at my time. Sometimes I get a little excited. <laughs> We're still talking about personal development. So your environment begins to shape you, and it begins to shape your outer presentation. But do you know that your environment cannot shape your inner presentation without your will? Wow. Mm. Your outer presentation cannot be shaped by what is around you and the atmosphere that is around you because inside of you is the seed of God. It's the DNA of your Father. It is the Holy Spirit that is inside you to guide you into all truth that you will break out of shells of deception and you will break out of shells of deformity and you will break out of shells of being handicapped. Because once that seed that's inside of you gets shaken and it gets awakened up, that it can no longer pretend. Mm -hmm. See, once something births, it can't now pretend to be a seed. Come on, yeah. Come on baby. See, the enemy comes to steal the seed. He comes to steal the word as soon as it's planted. He comes to steal it before it's strong, before it, before it launches out and it yeah, begins yeah, yeah. to work and it begins to see, discern, and understand. Come on. And so even in that, the Lord has still created a system of rerouting you back to the process. Oh, rerouting you back to the process. So you can say, well, you know, I was born like this. Homosexuals will say, I was born like this or whatever. Be ye born again. <laughs> By the renewing of your mind. Yes. Be born again. Because that which is inside you has to die, and that seed of the old man has to die, and you have to receive the new man, and that seed begins to birth. And once it's birth, you have no excuse. You now have the Holy Spirit. You now have the ability to decide, the ability to make a choice. Oh, no, she ain't making you do it, sir. Oh, no, he ain't making you do it, ma'am. Oh, no, 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 ma'am, sir, ma'am, he, she, them. Uh-uh, no. That is not the case. You're doing it because you want to do it. You're doing it because sin has pleasure. But at the end, it's destruction. The Bible declares the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. It's a gift. Can we open it up? Come on, let's unopen it up, right? You have to open it up so we have choice and we have to take accountability yeah. for our actions. And in that accountability, God begins to show us more and more of who he is and show us more and more of our purpose. So how do we get our personal development and how do we really rev ourselves up to do something or, or whatever your ambitions may be? A lot of times when you hear personal development, people think it's only in reference to business or only in reference to if you're trying to do something right, right. that is really big. But personal development, that is your reasonable service. Yeah. That's your own maintenance. That's your own personal maintenance. Mm -hmm. Just like you brush your teeth. Mm -hmm. Your personal development is so crucial. You cannot depend on anybody else to help you be emotionally balanced. Okay. Mm -hmm. Emotional balance is critical. Yeah, that's right. I was recently having a Bible study with my family, and I was explaining to them that the lead, leading cause of death in America is not cancer. The leading cause in America is anger. Come on, baby. Anger is killing us. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 
anger, resentment, unforgiveness. It's killing us. The equation of anger, bitterness, and unforgiveness, the Bible described it as the drying of the bones. Mm -hmm. Come forward and interpret it in this present time, and that is cancer. My God. It creates cancer. People are mad as hell. Yeah. <laughs> and it's killing them. Yes. It's killing us. Yeah. One by one, and it's a slow kill, and it's a sneaky kill. Because sometimes we don't tell people how angry we are. Come on. We don't tell people that I'm just close to the edge. Yeah. I'm trying not to lose my head. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you because there is a battle for your mind and God is trying to help you to see discern and to understand your purpose that there were going to be people and winds that come to blow this butterfly off of this coon so that it would not produce because you gotta stay still to produce. You gotta be planted so you can flourish. You gotta stay still so that you can produce. So things are gonna come to try to push you out your comfort zone, to tick you off, keep ticking you, ticking you, keep offending you, offending you. The last person keep lying to you, lying to you. You know, just dun 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 dun. You know? And they just keep on until now. That song is so far rooted in your yeah. irritation yeah. Yeah. that when people ain't even bothering you, what you want? Right. Right. What? It's like, why is that lady so nasty? Right. I had not even said nothing to her yet. Mm -hmm. It's because in her mind she has an inner torment of the spirit of fear, which is rooted in anger that torments her, and it echoes every negative experience, and echo every disappointment, mm -hmm. and it echoes every regret over and over again and even when she's yeah. being treated right she can only remember what was her last my mistreatment god. My god. Oh my. Mm -hmm. and god is constantly trying to show her yeah. my god. that's not it mm -hmm. go in the other direction stop following the same pattern the same guy you dated the same guy and the same thing happened with the same guy with the new guy it looked like the same guy on the inside, but on the outside, he looked a whole lot better than the last guy. And that's why I, I thought he was going to be different. See, I thought he was going to be different because he, he looked a lot, lot better than the last one. Come on. And, 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 and you know, and he, he, hit me every, he hit me every night, but he was also a lot stronger than the last one. So, so, so when he hit me, I, I really had had a way. For, for more than a few days, I had had away like for a week. Mm. Oh my. Because I had to recover. Jesus. Sometimes that out of presentation can be a deception among yes. us. Yes. Yes. People's out of presentation does not all the time reflect what is their inner seed. They could have the seed of the devil. You understand. And sometimes they're sitting in the very church. Yes. Come on. That has taught them how to fabricate it, fashion yes. the wind. Yes. Yeah. Oh, they don't even got the real colors. Woo. Woo. They're pretending. Right. Oh God. We have imposters yeah. and pretenders mm -hmm. seeking to devour you. Yeah. Following you and studying and knowing your weaknesses. And social media could be a blessing, but it also can be a curse at the same time because you have people and demons and witches following you and they're studying you and they're learning your habits and learning what you like and what you dislike and sending you what you like in its presentation but it has the seed of the Come devil on. Yes. but God has not left you without armor because you can see you can discern and you can understand and when you have those three things working simultaneously you a bad butterfly. <laughs> you a bad butterfly. It's like that butterfly, when you see butterflies, they look so careless. I'm talking all this stuff about what the butterfly go through, is, but go through. But when you see the butterfly, what it look like? Grace, right? Yes. It's grace. 
If, have you ever seen a butterfly that looks stressed out? <laughs> I ain't never seen a stressed out butterfly. Because the butterfly knows, sees, discerns, and understands his purpose and his process. And it never forgets it. It's rooted inside of him. This butterfly is not no better than us. Because we have the Holy Spirit that is inside of us, that is rooted in us. And that Holy Spirit leads and guides us into all truth. All truth. So the truth is, we shouldn't be broke down. We shouldn't be looking like we ain't graceful. Wow. And we shouldn't be close to the edge. When someone push us and get us upset, oil should pour out. Yeah. God, yeah. God, yeah. God, yeah. God, yeah. God, yeah. God, yeah. When you get mad, oh my God, you need to just go up in a praise and go up in a worship. Yes. We need to begin to worship God violently and worship him and really war with the demon of anger. I had to take it down several times myself. It's like a bear, a wolf, and a tiger, and an alligator all at once. The spirit of anger. Jesus. It will haunt you, and it will lay on you. And you will learn to live life with it laying on you, and you will learn to just carry it around. <laughs> oh no. Yes, Lord. Yesterday wound is bad. Mm -hmm. And you'll learn to accept and settle for less. Oh God. And God has given you authority to throw that thing off your back. Get off of my back. Yes. The joy of the Lord will be my strength on today. Yes. Things are not the way I want them to be, but I declare the word of the Lord over yes. I believe the word of the Lord. I will choose faith over fear. That's yes. it. Fear will not wear me into this spiral of depression and oppression. I can't lose. The spirit of truth lives in me. And when I am weak, the Bible says he makes me strong. And if I am trapped, he'll send angels and angelic force to come and get his daughter. Just like a father would. Let somebody mess with his seed. Come on. Let somebody mess with his daughter. She can't get out. Come on now. He'll step down out of heaven. Yes, he will. He'll come down. Yes, he He'll dispatch the angels. The angels can't get it done. He'll do it himself. That's right. That's right. I do deliverance ministry. And there are certain deliverances that I cannot even minister. You understand. The Lord says, I will deliver them. Yes, right. baby. It's a process. Yeah. It's a process. There are some processes that God will not allow anyone to minister to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He himself is going to deliver you out of it. Yes. You have to trust him and trust your process. Yes. Trust him with your process. Yes. Can no one take the blame for why you didn't get free? He yeah. said, oh, I tried that, Chris. <coughs> I tried that. I tried, I did all, uh -huh, did all, uh -huh, did our checklist, I did all that. Well, you know what? Maybe you did do all of that. But let's stand in faith now to let God do the rest. Oh, man. Let's stand in faith now for God to do the rest. Because the Bible says that he will come down himself and deliver you. That's right. My God. So there's so many examples in the Bible where God didn't deliver them all out at once. That's right. Little by little. Little by little. Mm, but it is definite and it is a sure thing and it is your inheritance. Yeah. That's why he even put there, he told the disciples how to pray. He said, give us this day our daily bread. Daily. Your daily bread, he's not talking about bread. Mm -hmm. He's talking about deliverance. Mm -hmm. He's talking about emancipation. Yeah. He's talking about liberty. Mm -hmm. yeah. That it's a new day. Each day and each day, he said, pray into your liberty. Because all around you, from the time you wake up, there's things that already are set for you to put you back in bondage. Mm -hmm. And there's no 12-step program to that. Mm -hmm. The program is trust in the Lord. Yes. Ask in the Lord for strength. Yes. And he will bring you out. Yes. He will bring you out. Deliverance Collage is my very first book, and it's not a book drop, but it's a great drop. 
It is a series of stories of deliverances that the Lord brought me out. And it wasn't all right away. It wasn't all rapid. I had to walk through some stuff. I had to walk through my process like the butterfly. I had to know when to rest. Sometimes I went out there in the wind and tried to go in the same direction of the rough of the wind. I got roughed up. And I had to come back. What does that look like? Coming back to mama's house. Coming back to church. Coming back to reading your Bible. Coming back to praying. Coming back to trusting. Come on, coming back to stop making the same old mistakes over and over again. Falling out of love with your insufficiencies. We can fall in love so much with our insufficiencies that we're like, oh God, you know my heart. Mm -hmm. Well, no, he wants you to know his heart. Yes. And make the exchange. His heart for my heart, because my heart is red. There's no nothing good in it. Nothing good. It's nothing good. The Bible talks about the heart pretty rough. Yeah. Y'all read that? How you talk about the heart? Mm, I'm like, oh, rough. <laughs> the heart is raggedy, ain't it? It's red. Mm. That's what I miss. Let's make the exchange. Mm-hmm. Let's make the exchange so we can see today, so that we could discern, so that we can understand today. I want to do some declarations and then I'm going to close out and have some prayer, give an opportunity for some ministry, and then I'm just going to bless it and I'll pass it to uh, Pastor uh, Alicia. Alicia. Lord, here we go. Y'all ready? Yes. Say, Lord, open my eyes to see the process. Lord, open my eyes to see the process. Lord, help me to discern the path. Lord, Lord, help me to discern the path. Lord, give me wisdom and understanding in my process. Lord, give me wisdom and understanding in my process. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I wanted you all to hear yourself saying that because God is encouraging us today that he is not hiding our process. He wants us to discern our path and guide us. He wants us to get the revelation of who he is and who we are in him so that we can fulfill our purpose, so that we can carry out this personal development each day. Personal development is not a tape. It's not a book. Man, personal development is a person, and his name is Jesus. That's right. And we need him. We need him for our mind. We need him for our heart. My God, we need him. So I am so glad that I was invited to share this with you. God opened my eyes to see so much about the butterfly and the understanding of the butterfly and how it relates a lot to process. And it's not that we have not heard um, how butterflies relate to process, but from God's perspective of what he's saying, that he wants you to see and he wants you to discern and then he wants you to understand. And remember um, this, always remember this, seeing is identity of God. All right, seeing is the identity of God and who you are in relationship to him. Discerning is knowing his voice, knowing the voice of God. Understanding is how now I take that and apply that Mm -hmm. and do the instruction and walk out the process. Mm -hmm. Because you need understanding. The Bible declares and all that getting to get understanding. It is not enough to see. And it's not enough to discern, but you're going to have to understand what to do once you get it. That's right. Ooh, that's so what happens is people come to church every Sunday, and then they come back to the pastor. What I need to do? Mm-hmm. Can you pray for me? Mm-hmm. I'm tired. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, God wants you to understand, baby, so you don't be tired. Right. So you rest upon this flower. There is rest in the Lord. Right. You need to worship. You need to praise him. You need to spend time with God. There's rest in God and you ain't gonna know it and then when I say it it's gonna sound like a nursery rhyme because it sounded like a nursery rhyme to me I'm going through all this you talk something I'm praise worship I'm dying over here what you talking about but give me some chocolate <laughs> but you, you don't know it until you push yourself into the experience of it until you open your mouth and you hear yourself cry out Abba 
You hear yourself cry out for the Father. And as you hear yourself cry out for him, that seed that I was talking about that is inside of you will we begin to reconnect with your daddy. It'll begin to reconnect and you'll begin to feel his presence. And when you feel his presence, it's going to thrush you and cleanse in mourning. And you'll begin to feel his presence and you'll begin to have an encounter with God. There will be a substantial time mark for your life. And you need those hours. And this is why sometimes the Lord allows us to get snagged. And he allows us to go through things because it gets our ear. But it also causes us to cry out to him. Mm -hmm. Because as you draw close to him, he will draw closer to you. Guaranteed. Now, I want to pray. I'm going to pray. And if anything that I have already shared has touched anyone and you just feel the need to come up, I'm not, I'll call you out and all that, whatever like that, then I'll, I'll pray for you as you come up here. Let's get this little, little music. Let's just kind of soft it. Get in your place of worship. Those who know your holy language, I just want you to begin to pray real softly. Begin to set this atmosphere. Oh, God, I believe that it is conducive to healing. Even yeah. that when I had walked in here, I heard the Lord said that those who have come that are thirsty, that he said they shall be filled. Yes. And some of you have been having this inner thirst, and you kind of been hiding your thirst, kind of like I'm hiding my thirst as I've been talking, and i just yes. been sipping little... Yes. Short sips, but the Lord says, He says, I'm going to fulfill that thirst. I'm going to fulfill that unspoken request. I'm going to fulfill that unspoken desire. That thing that you haven't told anything, anybody about. He said, That is the thing, the thing that you least think that I am going to address. He said, I am going to address that because today I want to show you a sign. He said, Today I want to show you a wonder. Today I want you to know that I am Father. Today I want you to feel that seed that I have planted in inside of you before the foundation of the earth before you even decided to step into this earth body you had already agreed to your purpose and when you said yes he predestinated you and he set you forth and he called you out of darkness into the marvelous night he called you by name and it's written in the lamb's book of record that you will be here at this present time so father now in the name of jesus and the power to the authority that he has given us in that through 1818 whereby all authority in heaven and earth has been given to us we now break all spiritual cataracts off of their eyes we loose right now spiritual ears and we bind every dumb and deaf spirit in the name of Jesus we loose right now over your people oh God revelation knowledge to claim enlightenment in our understanding according to Ephesians 1 and 18 that the eyes of their understanding will be enlightened my God, for they would know what the hope of their calling is and what is the riches and glory in your inheritance in the saints. Father, we thank you right now, God, that we break off every negative narrative that have been placed upon their lives, every negative narrative that they have placed upon themselves, every voice in their ear, every naysayer, oh God. We break it off of them right now. We break the back of the soothsayer right now in the name of Jesus the reading of horoscope stops today in the name of Jesus that they will get their word from you right now in the name of Jesus we rebuke right now every false prophecy over their life every false word and every word curse set upon them and set on their life from generation to generation be broken now in the mighty name of Jesus Father we pray Lord that your fire begin to come down oh God come upon their heart right now and burn off everything that is not like you right now. We pray right now in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that they will receive the Trinity, that will give them power, that a threefold cord is not easily broken, and they will not be broken, that they will not be weak, and I declare and decree today, strength right now to their thigh, that they can scale the wall, and they can run a troop right now, in the name of Jesus, things that has caused them to be weak, and things that have caused them to fall, will no longer cause them to fall. I send spiritual strength to them now. The ability to say no. The assertiveness right now over their life to reject the enemy in the name of Jesus. That the enemy shall flee in the name of Jesus. They will resist them right now. That you have given them power to resist the enemy in the name of Jesus. That no weapon and no foe set before them. 
that nothing formed against them will prosper. In the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for strength to their belly, strength to the generations, that they will begin to speak over their families, that they will begin to speak over their reason, that they will begin to speak to their finances, that they will begin to speak to their relationships right now. In the name of Jesus, oh God, I thank you right now, oh God, that you are welcome into them into a greater intimacy with you, oh God, that they now from this day forward will walk closer with you, that they will know you, oh God, that they will know your voice, oh God, and a voice of a stranger they will not follow. In the name of Jesus, as they lift their hands up in surrender, oh God, that you will give them everything that they have come for, oh God, that none be lost, that all be saved, those who are crying for those to be saved in their family. We pray right now, salvation, oh God, salvation, oh God, that you said, oh God, that all will be saved, that the seed of the righteous shall be saved. We thank you right now for salvation strength, for them to evangelize right now. Let your power go through this place, wall to wall, ceiling to floor, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, give the rest to the wicked one, oh God. In this atmosphere right now, oh God, even as you have declared that you would do it, I right now send the feeling strength, oh God, to every vessel. Every vessel that has been low. Every vessel that has been in panic. Every vessel where the light is on. Oh my God. Every vessel where the light is on. Where it's out of fuel. It's dangerous to ride like that. God is sending a feeling now. It's slowing down but it's filling up. Oh, it's filling up. Always filling up. Always filling up. If you believe them and you know them and you know your language, say it now. It's filling up. Lift up your cup. Lift up your cup. It's filling up. It's filling up. It's filling up. It's filling up, but you're going to have to surrender. Only lifted cups can fill. It's filling up. It's filling up. Come now and say, God, give me the drink. Come now, Rabasso Koraba, waste no more time. Come now, Rabasu Kurabataya, Erabasu Kurabataya, Rabasakaya. If you need a refilling from the Lord, Rabasso Korabataya, the time is now. Eshiketer Mansu Kurabataya, O Rabatarabataya, Labasu Kurabataya, Ekete Shekera Masura Bashaye, Labasu Kurabataya, O Garabasso Korabataya, Labasu Kurabataya. He said, they that thirst of the righteousness shall be filled. So it is your thirsting. It is your pursuing. It's your panting just like the woman who touched the hem of his garment. She pressed her way. There's living water. Robo so coramante kere bataya. Oh God, la 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 bo shande de 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 bashaya. Take a dip, take a dip. Oh rabasi kide bataya la basu kuda bashike. Take a dip, take a dip. Robo bo 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 so koto rabataya la bashiki ya. Eke rasa kaya la la bo shakare de 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 bo shikere bataya. I speak to every spirit of hindrance now, and I rebuke you in the mighty name of Jesus. Every self-righteous spirit, every religious spirit, every spirit of tradition and uh, spirit of familiarity be broken now in the name of Jesus. That you will not come and be a hindrance to
to the feeling of the people. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Rabba Sukor Rabataya, Ishikite and the Riyasiki and the Rokotaya. Or Ramamamai Kora Kashinaman Sukura Bataye, Labasukora Bataya. Oh God, I thank you, Lola Boshakaraba Shakaya. I thank you, O oh God, that love lives, O oh God. Rabba Sukura Bataya. Love lives in fear, torment, so God. Oh Rabba Sukura Bashikida Bataya. And just as you have taken a bold stand for love and sacrificed your only begotten son, that then none could have the opportunity, O oh God. Then none will, will be able to fear, O oh God. But your love casts away all the fear. Oh, Rabasi Kita Manandi Rabasi Kita Bataya. Break it off. Oh, break it off. Every aggressive and manly spirit, I see you. The spirit of bruh. Get off of we declare and decree healing and deliverance in this house tonight. I speak now specifically to the woman who is having the, 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 the man, a man. I'm seeing a man presence at home that you're having to deal with. My God. Oh, Rabasaya, an aggressive spirit. And even though this is a singles conference, oh, Korabataya, you've come for strength and you come for clarity in the name of Jesus. And God has come to give you that strength and He's come to give you that clarity. Oh, my God, that you will remove that stronghold, that one who is standing in your life and hindering you in your process and hindering you from your future and your purpose and you come for a reason that the Lord has sent you here for me to break that spirit off of you oh God Oh God, the lady that that that, um, that was singing that song, I want you to come and begin to sing that song. Just give me a few more minutes. Eh, the basi kide manti kide bataya. Oh, kana basi kuda bataya, kana basi kutai. I'm here for a few people. I see that. Raba sukota bataya, the bataya. Ukula man de 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 asi. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, do you want it, do you want to drink? I hope I'm not too late. You're not too late, this is the appointed time right now. Lord, give me you. He's waiting, he's waiting, you belong at this altar. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Oh God, no, 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 Yes, God. So 
live days longer that you shall see this sign and this wonder. Will it be a confirmation of in your family of that promise that you are asking God for? What you are asking God for in your family is coming to pass. He said, I made you a promise. And you're royalty. you 
right where you see. It's burning off of you something. I know it's burning in your seat. It's burning in your seat. It's burning in your seat. Because we all have things that need to be burnt off us. I dare you to say, burn it off me, Lord. Burn it off me, Lord.
need things in your life to be over, right? I hear that over. You need things to be over? Over. Over, Jesus. Over. Over in my life. Over. Over in my circumstances. Over. Come on. It's coming. Over, Jesus. Over in my sickness, Jesus. Over. Over in my finances. Over in your finances. Over, Jesus. Over. Fill me up. Over. Hallelujah. 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 I just bless this one of God who's come at the end, oh God. That you will feel her right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. And even as she smell, I can tell that she is a worshiper. Oh my God. And there is a glow upon you. My God. That the crown and the oil is already upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. And the Lord is saying you need to come forth. And this is a season where he's calling you forth. That he's calling you out to be a leader and to speak. There's ability for you to speak and there's ability for you to be heard. And you got a story. And the Lord wants you to begin to write that story out and release it. He says, I'm going to give you strength to release it. And this strength, just as she was saying it, over. As you begin to write, you're going to go over what has happened in the past. Everything that you begin to write, you're going to move over it. There's a scribal anointing upon your hands. The ability to write. The ability to write. The ability to write is upon you. Write your way out. When you write your way out, people will read their way out. I hear the Lord say. If you will write your way out, they will read their way out. It was just like Herod Tubman. Herod Tubman said, I could have saved more slaves if they only knew that they were slaves. But she had to show them in action to pull them out. There are people on your heart and you want them out of dark situations. The only way they're going to get out and they're going to have to see you walk your way out. They're going to have to see you walk through your process. A lot of people walk their process, but their process is not public. But the Lord says for you, your process needs to be public. People need to see how you got out of that. How you walked out of that. How you got out of that relationship. What had happened was. And when you begin to tell your story, the Lord says that you're going to set liberty to many people. Just receive it. It's a new crown and it's a new anointing, a ministry coming upon your life. New mandate. It's no longer unclear what you should be doing. That there's time to come off the pew and to do more and to be more. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Give her now for the Lord. Now for the Lord. For the Lord. For the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you. Strong prophetic gift. The Lord is working. Hallelujah. 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 I thank you all. I give glory and, God, and honor to God, to him. Everything flows. And I return this service over to your associate pastor.